Good morning, Metro. Good morning. How y'all doing this morning? We're going to open up with prayer, then we'll have praise and worship songs. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come to you this morning as humble as we know how, Father, giving you thanks and praise for all things, Father. We pray, Father, that your presence is felt in this building this morning, Father, as we praise and worship you. We ask you, Father, that you be with us and keep us within the grip of your grace and be with our minister, Father, as he has a word from you this morning to give to us, Father. We just ask you that you once again keep us within the grip of your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us start with I Keep Falling in Love with You, page one in our supplement books. Amen. Amen. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again and i keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again and he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by Oh, what a love between my Savior and I. I keep falling in love with him. Yes, over and over and over and over again. And he keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. My God keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. And he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Savior and I. I keep falling in love with him. Yes, over and over and over and over again. And he keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. My God keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. And he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Savior and I. I keep falling in love with him. Yes, over and over and over and over again. Amen. We have one more. After which we have scripture reading and prayer. Page 457, just over in the glory page. Amen? Amen. I have a home prepared where the saints abide, just over in the glory land. And I long to be by my Savior's side, just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land, I'll join the happy angels band. Just over in the glory land, just over in the glory land, there we the mighty host I'll stand just over in the glory land. I am on my way to those mansions fair, just over in the glory land. There to sing God's praise and His glory share, just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land, I'll join the happy angels band. Just over in the glory land, just over in the glory land, there we the mighty host I'll stand, just over in the glory land. 
Let us pray. Our Father and our God in heaven, we thank thee for this day and our many blessings. We thank thee for Jesus Christ, the life that he lived, and the death that he died that gave us all the right to the tree of life. Father, we're living through a pandemic, but for the Christian, it's not fear because we don't fear man. We reverence God. We ask a special blessing on our minister who will shortly stand for us and bring unto us the bread of life. We ask that you would bring back remembrance of things that he studied uh, and that as he imparts them on us, we may not allow them to fall on deaf ears, but we may search our hearts and see where we need to make changes. And you allow us the time and space to make those changes. We pray for all the ministries that stem from this church, those who work with the young people, those who work with the older people, our Sunday school teachers, and especially our leaders and their wives. We pray for our deacons and their wives. We pray for our elders and their wives. And we pray for our minister and his wife as we're all collectively enjoying in a ministry here in this part of the Moore Vineyard. Forgive us of our sins, our strength. Forgive us of our sins, strengthen us where we're weak, and build us up where we're torn down. And these are the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. We'll have one more, and after which we'll bring our minister up. We know he has a word from God to us. Amen. Amen. Page 646. That's a little talk of Jesus. That's a little talk. Amen. Amen. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. And it bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. And now just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Now let us tell them all about our for he will hear our faintest cry, and he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer for yearning, as your heart to heaven is turning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. And sometimes my path seems dream without a ray of cheer. And then the cloud of doubt may hide the light of day. And the mist of sin may rise and hide the starry skies. But just a little talk with Jesus clears the way. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Now let us tell them all about our for he will hear our faintest cry, and he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer for yearning, as your heart to heaven is turning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. And I may have doubts and fears, and my eyes be filled with tears. But Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. And I'll go to him in prayer, and he knows my every care. And I'll just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Now let us tell them all about our for he will hear our faintest cry, and he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer for yearning, as your heart to heaven is turning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Now let us tell them all about our for he will hear our faintest cry, and he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer for yearning, as your heart to heaven is turning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Amen. Good morning, Metro Church of Christ. We're grateful and thankful once again to be here on this grand occasion. God has blessed us. 
beyond the shadow of a doubt. He woke us up early this morning and he has started us on our way. And I think we ought to just take the time out to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for this another day. It's a mighty, mighty good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. And it's good to be a part of the family of God. There is no family like the family of God. I don't care what you do. I don't care who you're born into. You have not really been born into a family until you've been born into the family of God. And I just want to say thank each and every one of you for your participation in the service thus far. God has been good unto all of us. Y'all looking like kings and queens and sons and daughters of God Almighty. I'm here to tell you he's got you blessed this morning. And we're grateful and thankful. And so we're just here to worship the great God of heaven who has blessed us and given us the ability to uh, worship him in spirit and in truth. I want to say to you all that uh, I'm happy and I'm excited about the fact that God would choose little old me to say a word from his word. I, I have three little thoughts that I want to share today and the lesson will be yours. Uh, but I want us to know as I prepare to get at this lesson uh, this morning, I want us to know that I know that you know and we know that there's a lot of things that are going on in this world <clears throat> and it's not as we would like for it to be. But I don't know about you all, but I am thankful that this world is not my home. I'm glad to know that you know what? I'm just a pilgrim and a stranger here. My citizenship is in heaven according to Philippians 3 and 20. And one of these old days, God is going to call me from labor to reward and I'm going to go home to be with God, my father, be with my brother Jesus Christ and there with all of those saints that have come uh, uh, through great tribulation and have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Isn't that some good news? That's some good news to me. I don't know about you all, but it's good news to me. I want to talk to you this morning from this subject because everything is going on in the world and we're confused and we're concerned, we're overwhelmed by issues that are, are going on here, but I want you to know that God uh, has done something for those of us who are children of God, those of us who are students of God, those of us who trust in God, and those of us who love God and who have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine that has been delivered unto us according to Paul's writing in the book of Romans chapter 6 verses around 17. Uh, read it over there. You'll find it that I'm telling the truth. I am thankful. I'm glad to know that. And so a lot of people are walking around today with their heads hanging down with their hearts being heavy and uh, the uncertainties uh, about the things that are going on in this world. But I, I want you to know that I, I want to talk to you from uh, uh, the point of a question. My subject my uh, today is in the form of a question. And I, I just want to ask you that uh, many children of God uh, who have obeyed the gospel and uh, know that God is good and have been walking with God and God has walked with you uh, for all these years, I just want to raise the question and thought, and that is, where is your head? I, I, I just want to know, where is your head? Uh, because uh, we can lose our minds, we can lose our heads uh, in the midst of all of this craziness that's going on in this world. But I need us to know, and that I know, and I've known for a long time, I'm just speaking from my own experience, that, that, that life here is short. Uh, we have no lease on life. Life is short. I say that because of the fact that I experienced the loss of a loved one at a very, very early, early age. And it changed the dynamics of my entire life. Uh, I was headed in one direction, but because of what God saw fit to allow to happen, uh, it modified my life and set me on a different path. And, and God will put people in your life uh, that will help you get to where He's trying to get you to. And so I'm grateful and I'm thankful this morning that, that God is the God uh, who sees further than man sees. God is the God who knows everything and that God is the God who can do everything. But the fact of the matter is, is that in the form of the question of our lesson for today, where is your head? And I'm speaking not only to the saints of God, but I'm speaking to those of you that are considered sinners because you can get your head right uh, this morning with God. Uh, when we began to look at Paul's writing to this church at Colossia, Paul writes something there and he gives the uh, church there some encouragement uh, and he lets them know as he 
raises the question, but yet at the same time, he, he gives them some, 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 some identity, something for them to identify with and to recall or recollect or remember who they are and who they belong to. It's important, church. It's important, world, for us to know who we are. Uh, because if we can't identify who we are, we are in a major mess. If we can't identify where we are, and when I say uh, where we are, I'm talking about where we are in our relationship with our creator. If we're not in the right relationship with him, we're in trouble and this world will continue to beat us down and to beat us up. But because we are children of God, those of us who are, every now and then we have to have our hearts, our heads, and our minds recalibrated. So if you will, I want to get at my lesson like this. Paul raises the question to the church there at Colossians. And I'm going to begin and reading in Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 uh, through 4. Paul raises this question and he says, if if ye, if ye then have been risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. In other words, if, if, if your life has been changed, if your life has been modified, if your life has been wrapped up in Christ, then stop seeking after those things that are down here. So he says, seek those things which are above. What's above? He says what's above is where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Where is Jesus? He's sitting on the right hand of God. Then in uh, verses number two, Paul says, set. He says, in other words, uh, uh, you, 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 you place your affections on things above. Uh, uh, uh. And then he says, not on the things of the earth. Why? Because these things down here will certainly depress us, will cause us to lose focus of the fact of who God is, what God has done for us, who we are, and what God intends for us. Paul lets them know in verse number three, he says, for in case you didn't know it, ye are dead. And your life is hid. In other words, uh, your life is hid, but it's hid uh, uh, not as to where it cannot be seen, uh, but your life is hid with someone that has been seen, with someone who can still be seen, and with someone who everyone at one day will see whether they're ready or not. He said your life is hid with Christ where? In God. When Christ, who is our life, when Christ is your life, a lot of people don't want to be around you because he's your life. You don't do what they do. You don't think like they think. You don't act like they you act. You don't worry like they worry. You have a different perspective and a different outlook because you're all wrapped up in Jesus Christ and your life is here in Christ, in God. But he lets us know when Christ, who is our life, shall appear. Guess what's going to happen? Then shall ye also appear with him, how? In glory. I want to talk to us this morning, as I stated. Uh, where is your mind? The mind has been stated, it's a terrible thing to waste. I oftentimes told those that were younger that would come and spend time with me, and I tell people today, Whatever you do, don't you give a person your mind because that is one of the things that you must cherish. And people will do to your mind what uh, you can never retrieve back. So Paul writes, uh, if you then have been raised up with Christ, that's if. In other words, wherefore, if you be dead from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world you subject to the ordinance of the world? Paul says, touch not, taste not, handle not, which are all to perish. In other words, all of these things are just fleeting by us. They're all going to 
perish with the using after the commandments and the teachings of men. Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 20. But I need to get at my lesson here and I want to let you know that one of my points is going to be, first of all, that it must be personal. I need you to know that it must be personal. Let me walk my way through here. Therefore, I need us to understand that every child of God must know that they have been raised up with Christ and never doubt their relationship with Jesus the Christ. Somebody said, Brother Preacher, what does that mean? Uh, that means to be co-resurrected. Please, if you will, understand that this is not a question, but it is a matter of fact. Uh, I came to tell you that the children of God uh, are spiritually partakers of Christ's death uh, and his resurrection and has now entered into their salvation. Uh, if you'll allow me just for a little while to point out uh, what Paul says in the scripture Y'all don't mind the scripture, do you? Because the scripture is God's word. Uh, Paul would let us know in the book of Galatians uh, chapter 2 and verse number 20. Paul says it in a personal manner. And you and I ought to be able to say it in the same fashion. Uh, and in this personal manner, uh, I have been crucified with Christ. Uh, in other words, I am dead uh, with Christ. Uh, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me uh, and the life which I now live I live in the flesh I live by the faith uh, in the son of God what did he do uh, who loved me uh, delivered me uh, and delivered himself uh, up for me uh, God is a mighty good God uh, yet you see me living uh, in this life but the life I'm living now uh, is not my life uh, I now live uh, for God uh, what a powerful statement uh, what a powerful thing to be able to say uh, that I no longer live uh, for myself but my life uh, is all wrapped up for God uh, I'm living for God and that God may use me as an instrument down here uh, in his kingdom that he may be able to get some glory out of this old life wherein I live now I came by to tell you and to let you know that divine heavenly and godly love expressed itself giving and sacrificing as Paul has just mentioned stating that who loved me and delivered himself up for me I came by to tell you if you ever want to have the right relationship with God it must be personal I said it uh, once, I think I'll say it again. Uh, it must be personal. Uh, you must have a personal uh, relationship with God, uh, the Father, God, the Son, uh, for yourself. Uh, am I right about it, uh, somebody? Uh, my first point is that it must be personal. Uh, as we study here, uh, you and I can discover that Paul teaches us uh, that it is a personal relationship with God, the Father, through God, the Son, empowering us through the gift uh, of the Holy Spirit. Uh, in other words, the union of the believer with Christ uh, is that they are, uh, they have shared uh, a life uh, and are sharing uh, a life with none other than Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Uh, I've shared a whole lot of things uh, in this thing called life, uh, but I've never shared anything like the life uh, I'm sharing uh, with Jesus Christ, uh, or better yet, the life uh, that he's sharing with me. Uh, as a matter of fact, while I'm here, uh, I need us to take time to look at what Romans uh, 6, 3 through 4 teaches us, uh, as well as Colossians uh, chapter 3, 1 through for uh, do you not know that all of us uh, who have been baptized uh, into Christ Jesus uh, have been baptized uh, into his death uh, I'm a dead man uh, but I'm a dead man uh, that's alive uh, in Christ Jesus uh, I'm dead to the world uh, but I'm alive uh, under Christ thanks be to God uh, Paul help us here to understand what you're saying uh, what Paul is saying uh, in other words uh, we have been uh, we have been uh, we have been uh, we have been uh, buried with him through baptism uh, into death uh, in order that as Christ uh, was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father so we too might walk in the newness uh, of life Romans chapter 6 verses 3 through 4 uh, my life is new uh, my walk is new my thoughts are new uh, I'm new uh, why because I've been buried with Christ Jesus uh, in baptism and now I've risen to walk uh, in the newness uh, of life uh, what used to excite me and what used to ignite me uh, in my yesterday no longer ignites or excites uh, but what excites me today uh, is the word of Jesus Christ uh, and being able to have Jesus uh, as my Lord 
and my Savior. Be able to have the Holy Spirit uh, as my comforter and my guide. Uh, in other words, it's through the child uh, of God's uh, belief and his obedience to the gospel that gives them uh, this union with Jesus the Christ. Why? Because believers have died, they've been buried, uh, and they have been risen uh, with Jesus the Christ. Uh, and by saving faith, uh, they have entered into a new dimension, uh, eternal uh, in the heavens. So when you and I stop and think about uh, the goodness of God, uh, we come to the point of realization uh, that we possess a divine uh, and an eternal life uh, which never ends. Uh, we receive a heavenly quality life brought to us by the indwelling uh, of the Holy Spirit. Uh, thank God uh, for his Holy Spirit uh, that indwells uh, in us. I don't know about you, uh, but I can speak for myself. Uh, I'm thankful uh, day in uh, and day out. Uh, I'm thankful uh, to be able to say that I am uh, in this group uh, which group is that? Uh, this group uh, called the Church of Christ. Uh, this group of the called out, the ecclesia. Uh, this group of the saved uh, that Jesus died for. This group of those who put their faith uh, in Christ Jesus uh, and have been obedient uh, to the body, uh, uh, to the death, uh, and to the burial uh, of the resurrection uh, of Jesus Christ who have put their faith uh, in the word of God. Uh, we, we possess uh, this divine and eternal life. Uh, and because I'm thankful uh, and I am in this group. Uh, and I'm talking about the group of Christians uh, that are alive in Christ. Uh, and to the realities uh, of the divine realm. Uh, I think I need to say that again. Uh, unto the divine realm. Uh, therefore I came to tell you. Children of God uh, have an obligation to, to live consistently with those realities uh, wherein we have been changed. Uh, I need to share with you not only uh, is it a personal relationship, uh, but it also must be practiced. Uh, yes, God said uh, it's a personal thing, uh, but we have to put what's personal uh, that we receive from God, uh, the mandates of God, uh, and keep God's word uh, and put them into practice. Uh, not every now and then, uh, not when we feel like it, uh, but each and every day uh, we have to put it uh, into practice. Uh, my point number two uh, is that it must be be practice. Uh, Y'all ain't saying nothing, uh, but it's still right. Uh, you can't just preach it. Uh, you got to practice it. Uh, you can't talk about it. You got to be about it. Uh, and therefore, you and I uh, have come to realize uh, that because we're new creatures uh, in Christ, we've been risen to walk uh, in the newness of life. Uh, we ought to, as the old songs say, uh, we ought to show some sign. Uh, am I right about it? Somebody, uh, listen to me now. This, uh, 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 that, uh, even so we must consider ourselves to be dead to sin uh, but alive to God uh, in Christ Jesus. Uh, I came to tell you knowing this you and I must fight the good fight uh, of faith. Uh, Christianity uh, is a fight uh, and we have an enemy and the enemy is out to destroy us. I came by to tell you, don't you ever think that now because I'm a child of God, uh, I got it made. I, I'm on easy street. Uh, you're going to be tested more now than you ever were before. But if you be risen with Christ, uh, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth uh, on the right hand uh, of the Father. I came by to tell you, don't seek uh, to please men. Uh, don't seek to satisfy yourself. Uh, seek uh, what pleases God uh, and you'll be alright. Uh, I know that's easier said uh, than done, uh, but don't forget God uh, did not leave us down here to fight this battle uh, all by ourselves. Uh, we have the power of the word of God and the indwelling of oh, the Holy Spirit back by the Father. I am here to let you know that, that you have never fought uh, on a, in a fight like this uh, or you never will uh, fight in a fight like this because this fight uh, is against sin uh, and sin uh, has its way. Uh, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh uh, and the pride of life. Uh, somebody said, preacher, I don't have a problem uh, with any of that. Uh, well, the only reason uh, you don't have a problem with any of that is because you're already dead. Uh, and I'm not talking about dead to Christ. I'm talking about dead to where you don't even have to deal with any of those issues anymore. Uh, you can believe that. However, 
I came by to tell you and let you know that we must not let sin uh, reign in our mortal body that we should obey it in the lust thereof. Uh, you got to fight uh, sin. Uh, you got to rebuke uh, sin. You got to stand up against sin. Uh, you got to pray for sin uh, to stay off of you and go on presenting the uh, members of our body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness uh, but present ourselves to God as those uh, alive from the dead uh, yes I was uh, I was uh, yes I was at one time uh, alive to sin uh, but now I've died uh, to sin and I'm alive uh, been made alive uh, unto Christ so I therefore no longer present ourselves uh, or present myself uh, unto uh, unto the unrighteousness uh, of sin but unto the righteousness uh, of God Romans chapter 6 uh, 12 uh, and 13 uh, what are you saying uh, brother Middlebrook uh, all I'm saying is that in other words uh, sin uh, shall not uh, have dominion uh, over you because we are the children of God uh, and we are not under the law uh, thanks be to God uh, but we're under grace uh, and when you're under grace uh, we know and we understand uh, that our God uh, is a God uh, of not only saving grace uh, but he is a God uh, of sustaining grace uh, in other words uh, God is able to give you what we need because God's grace uh, or God's strength uh, is made perfect uh, in our weakness uh, if you don't believe me uh, ask brother Paul uh, 2 Corinthians 12 and around verse number 9 uh, I need us to realize uh, and understand and know uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt that, that Romans uh, 6 and 14 lets us know that we're not under the law but we're under grace uh, and I need you to know we need to take a moment uh, every now and then uh, more often uh, than we do uh, and thank God uh, not only for his saving grace uh, but as I stated earlier, for his sustaining grace, uh, his matchless mercy, amen. Somebody, uh, therefore, Paul, if you will, uh, ask, what then uh, shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? Romans 6 and 14. Uh, I know my text uh, was out of the book of Colossians 3 uh, verses 1 through 4. But, but I want to go back and just apply what Paul says. Basically the same thing in the book of Romans. Uh, here as we speak, uh, Paul replies, uh, do not you know uh, that when uh, you present yourselves to someone as a slave, uh, you become slaves uh, to the one whom you obey. Uh, in other words, uh, be careful who you obey. Uh, pay attention uh, to who you obey. Uh, you have to say like Paul, like Peter and John, uh, it's better to obey God uh, than to obey man. I wonder do I have any witnesses up in here this morning. Uh, it's better to obey God then the old babe man, I've tried it and I've discovered that whenever I listen to man, I got in trouble. But whenever I listen to God, I came out on the blessed side of everything. I, I want to be on the blessed side. I, I don't know what side you want to be on, but, but I want to be on the blessed side. So it's better to obey God than to obey man. Now, are you going to have to suffer some things? Yes. I may have to suffer some things, but I'd rather suffer for being obedient to God than to suffer for being disobedient to God and listen to some not head man. Amen. Somebody. Amen. I need us to, I need us not only that, as Paul asked the question, he lets us know that the choice is ours. It can be either of sin resulting in death or it can be of obedience resulting in righteousness. I need you to do this here. Please don't misunderstand me. Don't, 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 don't misunderstand me. Please don't misunderstand me. And please don't miss your shout right here. Please don't misunderstand me. And please don't miss your shout. If you're at home and you're by yourself, you can shout glory, hallelujah. If you're there and you got somebody there, you can shout anyhow. Because God's word will make you shout. God's word will make you cry. You can start shedding tears in your mind. What you crying for? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just. Uh, something inside me just, just welled up in me. And it's the goodness of God. Amen. Working on your spirit because God has been good for you. And everybody can't understand what God has done for you because they haven't been there. But when you've been there, you know. You know what he's done. 
And you don't mind testifying to the fact the Lord been good to me. I might be going through something right now, but the Lord been good to me. So the choice is ours. Now, if you don't shout on anything else, I, I need you to shout on this here. Sh shout for, for Jesus. Shout, shout, shout for, shout for, for just, just, just shout because it's true. In other words, we owe thanks to God that through him, we were no longer made slaves to sin. We became obedient from the heart, that form of doctrine which were committed unto us. And having been freed from sins, we became the sons of righteousness. That's a shout right there. I am not what I used to be. I am somebody new. In other words, you're not looking at the old me. You're looking at the new creature according to Romans 6, 17 through 18. Do you remember what your sinful acts were? Uh, do you remember what your indulgement was uh, that God has delivered you and I from all those things? We live in sin. Uh, and the reason why we lived in sin, because y'all can say this, amen, in this year, because there's pleasure in sin. God did not in our lives while we were in it, both living in it, uh, practitioners of it, and some were even teaching it to our little kids uh, and putting it on display in our lives, just producing a, another sinful group uh, or another sinful generation for Satan. But thanks be to God, God changed us. He made us different through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. I'm no longer what I used to be. I'm somebody different. And we tell God, Thank you, God, for saving me from sin and self and Satan's seduction. Therefore, if you and I are going to serve or be called slaves, uh, why not? Or what better purpose is there to be called uh, a slave for God? Why not serve God who has already proven his love to us and given us an eternal home in heaven uh, with him forever and ever eternal in the heavens? But, but not only must we understand that it's personal and we have to practice it, but we got to do some praying. I came by to tell you, you got to do some praying. You got to do some praying. You got to do some praying. Where is your head? That where is your mind? That your mind has to be in heaven because if it's down here, you'll lose your mind. We must keep praying to God because all of us at some point in time as Christians will experience weaknesses because we are at war and that is the flesh wars against the spirit and these two are contrary one to another according to Galatians 5 and 17. Now, let us never forget what I am about to tell you now. Uh, we fight not for victory because we already have won the victory through Christ Jesus. Uh, we know that if God be for us, who in the world can be against us? Romans 8 and 31. I'm trying to encourage you to be strong now. We are more than conquerors uh, through Christ Jesus according to Romans chapter 8 and 37. Uh, we know we can do all things uh, through Christ Jesus who strengthens us according to Philippians 4 and 13. We've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 13. Uh, we are dead and our lives are hid in Christ uh, according to Colossians 3 and 3 uh, Jesus himself has promised us that he'll never leave us nor will he ever forsake us according to Hebrews 13 and 5 uh, and we also know that we have that same promise uh, that he made unto us way back when when he says uh, I will be with thee always uh, even until the end uh, I don't know about you but that's good news to me uh, when I'm going through my stuff uh, uh, when I'm going through hard times uh, a difficult time and I can't understand Understand some stuff. I said, I'm just going to leave it in the hands of God because uh, Jesus uh, will work it out. Uh, and I'm reminded of the old scripture in the book of Psalms 30 and 5. Uh, sometimes uh, at night I might have to weep, uh, but I don't mind weeping uh, at night because I know that in the morning uh, there's some joy uh, that is coming. Uh, I came by to ask you this question uh, What is your relationship uh, right now uh, with God. Uh, have you accepted Christ uh, as your Lord uh, and Savior? I believe that's a part uh, of all of our world problem today uh, is that it has not been uh, enough of us uh, who has accepted uh, the Lord Jesus Christ uh, as our Lord uh, and Savior. I'm not being judgmental uh, because I was out there on the other side. Uh, I'm just telling it uh, like it's written uh, in the book. Uh, we all need to be uh, obey the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ uh, and have our soul saved uh, and our sins uh, washed away uh, 
I need us to understand uh, we need to know uh, of weakness, uh, the weakness uh, of your flesh. Uh, but just as you uh, presented members, uh, your members uh, as slaves to impurity, uh, to the lewdness resulting in further lewdness. So now present your members uh, as slaves uh, unto righteousness. Paul, what are you telling us? Uh, if you're going to serve somebody, serve Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is the one uh, that is able uh, to save our souls. And we need to know and understand that without him, we can do absolutely nothing. Uh, I came to let you know that this new life is real. It's not a mystery. It's not something fake. It's not something made up. This new life in Christ is real. And I urge and encourage everyone. You don't believe me? Try it. But it's still Still means that we have to fight. We have to fight. We have to struggle. But, but it's real. It's, it's powerful. It's, it's real. It's, it's nothing like it. And though it no longer is our master, it can still overpower us if we are not presenting ourselves to God as servants of righteousness. Peter said in the book of 1 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1 and 3, he said, according as his, according as his who? God, the Father, God, the Son, his divine power. You want some power? Get hooked up with the power from heaven. As his divine power has given unto us all things. All things what? That pertain to what? Life and godliness. He not only teaches us that we are to live. But he also teaches us how we are to live godly. How? Through the knowledge of him that has us unto glory and virtue. Begotten us unto glory and virtue in Christ we have all the resources necessary for living this Christian victorious life. Outside of Christ, we do not have that. I came by to tell you. So Paul shines a spotlight supremely on none other than Jesus Christ in the book of Colossians 3, 1 through 4. Notice what he does here as I hasten. In Colossians 3 and 1, Paul lets us know it's with Christ. In Colossians 3 and 1, he lets us know where is where is Christ. In Colossians 3 and 3, he lets us know it's with Christ. In Colossians 3 and 4, he lets us know it's with him again. In Colossians 3 and 4, it's when Christ. In other words, it's only in Christ that we can be made complete. Who is the head of all principality and power. Paul lets us know according to Colossians 2 and 10. Now, there are a whole lot of people, even Christians, who fail to understand and pursue the fullness of Jesus Christ. So I came to tell you that we need to be all about the business of seeking the things above where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. Uh, every child of God must set our minds uh, on things above and not on things uh, that are on this thing called the earth. In other words, our preoccupation with the eternal realities that are ours in Christ must be the pattern of the believer's life. Uh, according to Matthew 6 and 33, we have to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto us. For to be preoccupied with heaven is to be preoccupied, is to be preoccupied with the one uh, who is there, with his purpose, with his plans, uh, and his provision, and to be connected uh, with his power. I think it's time for me to close us out now and I, I want to close us out uh, like this uh, this world if you will does not need uh, to hear more about what's going on uh, in our world today with CNN news uh, we don't need to hear more from Fox News uh, we don't need to hear more about ABC News uh, we don't need to hear more about world news uh, the world needs to hear and take heed to the gospel news uh, of Jesus Christ uh, and him crucified. Uh, the world does not need to keep listening uh, to what man is doing uh, or what man is not doing uh, down here in this earthly house. Uh, but we need to learn and know what God is trying to do down here and up there in his heavenly house. Uh, what man is doing here only frustrates, infuriates, stimulates, uh, and activates hate division uh, and diversion and this present world uh, that we live in. Uh, if you receive it you will still uh, discover that it has nothing in it. Uh, but if you receive Jesus Christ you'll find out that he has all power that is given unto him in heaven and in earth. 
Jesus Christ is the only one that is able to pray, take uh, this divided nation and this divided world and bring it back together in Christ Jesus. I, I came by to tell you, man can't do it. Only God can do it. He has the power to save the most wretched sinner. He can clean them up uh, and then uh, he can add them to the body of Christ which is the church he can fill them up with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit somebody talk back to me do you know a man down here that can do that he can produce in that same wretched raggedy sinner if you will he can produce in him if you will the fruits of the spirit which is love joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance and against such there is no law this message uh, of the gospel uh, as I prepare to take my seat uh, I need you to know and uh, I need you to understand that there's power in the gospel uh, Paul said for I'm not ashamed uh, of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation uh, unto everyone that believeth unto the Jew first and also unto the Greek for therein is the righteousness of God revealed uh, from faith to faith for the preacher what about this gospel message uh, how can I get saved uh, what do I need to know? Uh, can you give me some more details? Wait a minute. Let me tell you about this gospel message uh, and what this gospel message uh, will do. Uh, I've discovered for myself uh, that this gospel message uh, grips the mind. Uh, it stabs the conscience. It, it warms the heart. Uh, it saves the soul. Uh, it sanctifies a person. Uh, it satisfies a believer. It makes a drunk man sober, a crooked man straight, a uh, proliferating woman pure. Uh, help kids obey. Uh, haters have, have to love. Uh, it'll cause a sinner to ask, uh, what must I do to be saved? Uh, believe with all thine heart. Uh, repent of your sin. Uh, confess Christ to be the Son of God be baptized for the remission of sin rise and walk in the newness of life uh, walk by faith and not by sight uh, be ye steadfast uh, unmovable always abounding uh, in the work of the Lord uh, knowing that your labor is not in vain uh, in the Lord uh, what must I do to be saved uh, I just told you hear the gospel uh, that's the good news of death peril and resurrection of Jesus Christ uh, faith comes by hearing uh, and hearing by the word uh, of God amen son Somebody. You got to believe it with all your heart. Uh, Hebrews 11 and 6. Uh, you got to repent. Luke 13, 3 and 5. Confess Matthew 10, uh, 32 and 33. Uh, and then you must be baptized. Mark 16 and uh, 16. According to Acts 2, 47. Praising God uh, and having favor with all the people uh, after that great Pentecostal preaching day uh, that Peter preached the first gospel sermon uh, on Pentecost day. Uh, 3,000 souls the Lord added to the church in one day. Am I saved? Yes, you are saved. You are a child of God. You are a member of the Lord's church. You're holy, spirit-filled. You're sanctified. You've been set apart. You're heaven-bound. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. I look the same, but I am not the same. There's been a change that taking place inside of me uh, I am a child uh, of the most high God uh, glory hallelujah doesn't get any better than that uh, if you're here and you're falling short ask God to forgive you he will forgive you of all of your sins uh, and place you back in the right relationship with him if you're here and you need prayer. I came by to tell you. Jesus told his disciples. Uh, you have not. Uh, because you ask not. Uh, if you're too proud to ask. Uh, then why would Jesus uh, not be too proud to give it to you. You better open your mouth. Because he gave it to you. You better let him know what you want. And what you need. Not that he doesn't already know. But he wants to hear from you. So why not take advantage of the blessing that you have. In Jesus Christ. Came by to tell you. Today is your day to be saved. To be saved. You cannot be saved outside of Christ. You need to seek those things above what Christ sees on the right hand of the Father. There's nothing down here but temporary stuff. Your clothes wear out. Your house wear out. Your, your bodies wear out. 
your money is old, so they print new money. Your, your credit cards wear out, so they renew them. Uh, the, everything down here is temporary. Your car wears out. You got tires. You got oil leaks. You got leaks here. You got leaks there. Everything wears out. Your dentures. You get. You lose your teeth. You got to get. You lose everything is temporary. Everything down here is temporary. Hip surgery, knee surgery, back surgery, neck surgery. Everything is temporary. But the only thing that's eternal that will last is God's word and God's promise. And Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will stand forever. Today, you've heard the word of God. What will you do with it? Will you obey it? Or will you shun it? You may not need Jesus now, but I came by to tell you, there comes a point in everybody's life where they're going to need Jesus. And I say unto you, can't nobody do you like Jesus. God bless you as you have an opportunity to do what you need to do. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to be saved, call us. The number is 317 347-8790. We'll be here waiting on you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Yield not to temptation for Yielding is sin, each victory will help you, some other to win, you are the fight, man for Leon, word all passion subdue, just look ever to Jesus, and he will carry you through. So why don't you ask the Savior to help you Comfort, strengthen, and keep you He is willing to aid you And He will carry you through We've come to another part of our worship service, the offering. I'll be reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning at verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Every man according as he has purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Let us pray over the offering. Our Father and our God in heaven, we thank thee for this day and our many blessings. We pray for the offering. We pray for the purpose that it is being raised for. We ask, thank you for blessing us with jobs, sources, and resources whereby we give. These and other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I know it was the blood. Oh, yes, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day, one day when I was lost, you know Jesus died up on the cross. Oh yes, I know it was the blood for me. Separate and apart from the offering is our communion. We will look in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at the 23rd verse. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which you was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is a New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily 
eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Let us pray over the communion. Father God in heaven, we bow our heads and humble our hearts. We thank thee for the many blessings of this life. We pray for this bread that represents the body of Christ. We pray for the cup that represents the blood of Christ. And together we take it and remember Jesus until he comes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we'll take of the bread. And then we'll take of the cup. This concludes this portion of our worship service. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity that you've given us this morning uh, to come together in a fellowship and to uh, praise you, Father. We ask that you would just continue to, to watch over us, Father, and continue to protect us during these difficult times, Father, to continue to allow us to, to be and stay encouraged, Father, and to continue to, to lean on you, Father. Uh, Father, we ask that you would just watch over us um, as we leave this place uh, and allow us to uh, come back at the next appointed time. Father, we ask these things and all things as humbly as we know how. In your precious son, Jesus' name, amen. When we reach that city of the new Jerusalem, oh, we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. And how the ransom singers will together lift that hymn, oh, we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. We're singing, oh, what joy when we get home yes we're gonna rest beneath that cloudless dawn and in that land where saints never die oh we're gonna sing hallelujah sing hallelujah by and by